This is Minsheng Wharf. Few people know the original name, Holt Wharf. This was once the most advanced wharf that the British owned in Shanghai. And it was used by the British to dock their warships. On April 21, 1949, people at the wharf saw the arrival of a huge British warship, heavily damaged. What happened? Two days before, a much smaller British sloop Amethyst sailed from here. The ship's destination, Nanjing, capital of the nationalist government. Despite repeated warnings that the People's Liberation Army was about to cross the Yangtze, the British sloop sailed into it anyway. After all, British forces had sailed freely in the Yangtze for more than a century. A gun battle quickly ensued between the PLA shore batteries and the Amethyst. The Amethyst was hit and grounded, forced to raise a white flag. The British quickly sent out two rescue forces, including its biggest warship in the Far East, heavy cruiser London. Both of them engaged with the PLA and were driven out of the Yangtze. When the heavily damaged cruiser London arrived at Holt Wharf, life journalist Roy Rowan jotted this down in his notebook. The crowds of stunned British and American spectators looked as shell-shocked as the severely wounded sailors being carried ashore. No less stunned, Shanghai's city officials, who realized that the communists had done something no Chinese army ever dared do before, blow the warships of a Western power out of one of its rivers. The cruiser London, which limped back to Shanghai after its gallant effort to relieve the battered amethyst had failed, undergoes emergency repairs. Hold by communist guns, the London suffered 27 casualties, 12 of them fatal. The skipper, Captain Peter Caslett, was among the wounded. He tells of the head the of The amethyst incident sent shockwaves among the foreign residents of the city. But for the Chinese residents, this was a great morale boost. According to some foreign reports, such as one published in the Chicago Tribune, the Chinese residents of the city greeted the news of the PLA attack on the British warship with delight. Since the foreigners who had kicked China around for a hundred years were now getting what they deserved. Even the American ambassador, John Layton Stewart, felt the sentiment. I could sense an undertone of national pride among other Chinese in this achievement. Commercial and naval ships of foreign countries, principally British, had long sailed up and down this mighty river at their own unbridled will. But now at last they had been bravely challenged and routed. A few days after the Amethyst incident, all foreign warships moved out of the Huangpu River. A small Navy transport stands by to take on U.S. Marines, evacuating their now useless stations in China. Of foreigners, only those attached to the American Embassy and a few accredited foreign partners That was a significant moment in the history of Shanghai. For the first time in history, the Huangpu River was cleared of foreign warships, and no uninvited foreign warships were allowed in the Huangpu from that point on. Today, Shanghai is an international shipping center. Many of the old wharfs along the Huangpu River have long lost their industrial and shipping significance. They have morphed into parts of the city's urban renovation programs, and become tourist attractions, cultural landmarks, and popular destinations for the public. Music